Well, good morning, Catalina. It's a beautiful day to come together and to worship God in this day. Today, I'd like to remind you that it's Holy Communion Sunday. So wherever you are worshiping with us, I hope that you can grab a piece of bread or something like bread and some juice and bring it to your space of worship so that you can join us in Holy Communion at the end of the worship service. And then just so that you know, we will be worshiping in person at nine o'clock from here on until the fall in the worship service in, in the big sanctuary. And we will be alternating between contemporary and traditional worship in the sanctuary space at that nine o'clock hour in person. We'll be spread apart, distanced, and also we'll be wearing masks. So the, we will do everything we can to stay safe while we are together. And we will continue to have these online worship services as well. Now let us worship God. To the depths of the
one, a one, a one, two, three, four. Good morning. It's Avery here with a pretty confused looking Chris. I have a question for you. I got these drumsticks here. What do you think I'm going to do with them? Take, take some guesses, kind of think in your head. What could Avery do with these drumsticks? Yeah, maybe I could drum or maybe I could uh, throw them up in the air and do a cool spin trick. I'm going to do something though that I bet you're not thinking about. I'm going to take these drumsticks, I'm going to plant them into the ground, I'm going to water them, and I'm going to grow a tree. What, what do you think about that? Do you, you think it's going to work? I think it will. Maybe not though, right? You see, why, why won't that happen, right? Well, it used to be part of a tree, right? It's made of wood, but now it's been cut off and it won't grow. And that's kind of like in the story that we're gonna hear today in church, where Jesus is talking about a vine, but then it's cut off. And when it's cut off, it can no longer receive the food and the water from the rest of the tree. And it's kind of like if we were cut off from Christ, we're not able to receive the life from Christ, as if kind of like Jesus is the tree. But unlike these drumsticks, that once they're cut off, they're, they're cut off. These, they're not going to become a tree anymore, right? They're, they're past their growing days. But when we feel like maybe we've been cut off from Christ, the great thing is not only can we reconnect with Christ, but we're invited to do so. And we're invited to come back into that tree, invited to grow back with Christ, invited to continue to grow and flourish. And then we can go out and share that good news. <laughs> Because we're not just drumsticks, right? We're something that is living and breathing. And we can grow in Christ. Just like the vines in the story that we're here in a little bit here at church today. And so remember that above all things, not only are you invited into a relationship with Christ, whether you're actively growing with Jesus right now, or maybe you feel like you've fallen away. But the great thing is, is you can connect back in. Remember that above all things else, that you are loved, you are valued, and you are cared for. Amen. Hi, everyone. As we begin our prayer time, let's join together in our prayer of confession. Source of love and life, your glory knows no bounds. We yearn to set aside our fears, but we are often afraid. We long to love our sisters and brothers, but we often feel alienated from them. We desire to abide in you as you abide in us, but we can't seem to figure out how. Show us once more how to love, for only love can cast out fear. Show us how to love one another well, for only then can we truly know you. Show how to abide in your vine, for only then can we bear the fruit that glorifies your name. Let us pray. Father God, help us to remember that when we are facing good things or we are facing trials, that we need you as our life source. To be separate from the vine means that we receive no life, God, and so we need you. In this time of isolation, we need you now more than ever. Give us the strength that we need. Remind us that we are the branches and that you are the life source. As we pray this prayer that Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
you know, I know that every single day uh, we are set with challenges, but I also hope you know that we are definitely surrounded by God's goodness and God's love. And out of that, I hope that you have a sense of thanks. So let's offer up to God our gifts and let's join together in prayer. God, as we enter into this time of offering, we pray that first of all, that we would offer up not only our financial resources, but also the very gift of our lives. We thank you for the joy that comes in the many ways that we can take in your blessings. And Lord, we just ask that uh, we don't take this life for granted, but we live in the moment uh, being present with you and each other in that close connection. In Jesus' name, amen. In the darkest hour, when I cannot breathe, fear is on my chest, the weight of the world on me. Everything is crashing down, everything I had known. When I wonder if I'm all alone, I remember.
The scripture lesson today comes from John 15, verses 1 through 8. It says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vineyard keeper. He removes any of my branches that don't produce fruit, and he trims any branch that produces fruit so that it will produce even more fruit. You are already trimmed because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. A branch can't produce fruit by itself, but must remain in the vine. Likewise, you can't produce fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. Without me, you can't do anything. If, if you don't remain in me, you will be like a branch that is thrown out and dries up. Those branches are gathered up, thrown into a fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified when you produce much fruit in this way, prove that you are my disciples. The reading of the word for the people of God. In the music video called Stay With Me by Sam Smith, Sam talks about how a one night stand leaves him empty. You see him walking down alone down a, a, a deserted street and he's saying, I'm not so good at a one night stand, but that he doesn't want to be alone. So he asks the person to his lover to stay with him. He says, won't you stay with me because you're all I need. The pain in the video is palpable. It's as if he's obviously looking for a love connection and for something that can last throughout his future, but instead he keeps getting lost in this one night stand. And sometimes in life, we search and search for true love, for deep connection, but we are left empty because we have no foundation for the deepness that we seek. In the scripture today, Jesus uses the imagery of the vineyard to explain something about living near to God. Now, remember that in those days, the vineyard was a common and well understood image. In fact, in reality, in that area where Jesus and his disciples lived and walked, there were many vineyards. It's been said that the Middle East and the Eastern Mediterranean area was the cradle of the world's vine culture. Uh, vineyard culture, and for over 2,000 years before vineyards reached Europe, the Middle East area was filled with vineyards. So in general, they think that vines were cultivated way back in 6,000 BCE. So the setting of vineyards was as visible and common to the disciples as they walked the roads, as they walked the hillsides, as they moved around from town to town in the in the area of Israel. The grape vine was such a common fruit. It was used to make vine to make wine and it was part of their everyday meals. So Jesus chose to say something important by using something that was very ordinary and very well understood in their day. The scripture that we read could we could spend hours and hours talking about it because there's so much inside of it, so many different points that could remain made. But I think one of the main points, the one I'm going to focus on today, is when Jesus says, remain in me and then you will produce fruit. So today I want to look at the word remain. Remain is something that we know, but other words that could also describe that word remain is abide, stay, persist, continue, hang with me, pause here. Many scriptural translations use the word abide, which is a beautiful old word, but I like the simple word stay. Stay with me. Stay with me, Jesus is saying. Don't leave this teaching and don't leave your reliance on God and on Jesus Stay right here with me. 
So Jesus tells the disciples that God is a vineyard owner, that Jesus is the vine and that we are the branches. He reminds them that in order to be a healthy branch, you must be first fully connected to the vine because we know that the vine gives sustenance to the branch, gives water, minerals to the branch, and helps the branch receive sustenance even from the sun. Without the vine, the branch is broken off and dead. It cannot stay alive without the vine, much less produce the fruit that we want without being connected to the vine. So Jesus reminds them and us that we are to produce fruit, that the result of remaining close to Jesus, close to God, is, and sustained by the Spirit is to produce or to bear fruit. Well, what is, what is that fruit? I think one of the easiest ways to think about the fruit that we are to produce is the fruit of the Spirit found in Galatians 5. It says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And if we could get those things into our lives, we would be good at producing fruit. Another th way we could look at or think about producing fruit is Jesus' focus on loving God and loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. So if we just focus on that one thing, we'll be producing fruit in our lives. So I think perhaps from this scripture, there are two things we could ask ourselves. One is, are we staying near to God? Are we staying close to Christ? Remember that in the end of Jesus's life, he asked a very similar question. He was out at the Garden of Gethsemane, facing the reality of his own death, and his disciples were nearby, and he asked them one simple thing. He says to his disciples, won't you stay with me? Won't you remain here with me and keep watch and pray with me? When someone we love is hurting, we send out word in every way we can to ask people to pray because we need people to be with us, to stay with us when we are in a time of need. And we pray, we pray ourselves to God. We attend to God by calling out for help. We ask God to intervene and to change our situation. When we are hurting, we run quickly to God, stay with God, cry out to God in whispers and thoughts and prayers. So we do know what it means to remain with God in the tough times. But do we know what it means to stay close to God during the life's ups and downs? Do we know how to remain steady and constantly focused on who God is and how God is leading us every single day? And the second thing is that we must, of course, look at the fruit of our lives. What is the result of the fruit of our connection to God? So because we have God in our lives, because we turn to Jesus because we know the scriptures and live them out, what is the result that comes out of that choice in our lives? What does our fruit look like? And I think each and every one of us has to examine our hearts, our lives, our words, our actions, and find out how healthy we are in the vineyard. Are, are we producing fruit? Are we producing beautiful, tasty, delicious, amazing fruit? I was thinking the other day about a young woman who had lost so much in the process of trying to find love. She fell in love quickly and hard, but then just as quickly it seemed like every time she fell in love, uh, a breakup ensued. And sometimes she would look back and see the wisdom of her heartbreak experiences that it probably wasn't best to be with that person for the rest of her life. But mostly she felt the crush of pain when facing her losses. She began to think that maybe love was not meant for her. So after many years of falling in love and breaking up, she finally met someone who was a close friend. But she couldn't make herself fall wholly in love with him, thinking still that love would just bring her, her heartache again. And so this one who loved her fully had tried and tried to make that relationship stable and 
and, and, and make it a foundation. But finally, he could see that she probably wasn't ready for love. And so he was about to walk away. But just at the last moment as he was about to walk out, she realized that actually he was her soulmate, the one she'd been looking for. And it was the pain of her past experiences that made her hesitate and withhold her love. And so she gave in and she decided to love again, to take all the risks and to take all chances and to, to love again. This couple is still together today, today as they have decided to stay with each other. And so my beloved Catalina, today I want to remind us to stay with God. Don't let your fears, your, your past, your doubts, your heartaches, your questions come between you and God. Stay close to the one who can sustain you and deepen your faith and deepen your love. The one who can show you how life can have meaning and texture and joy. Stay with God. Because loving God is not meant to be a one night stand, but rather a forever kind of thing that will go on and grow you and teach us and remake us and reform us and be merciful to us. Stay close. Amen. So I hope uh, you had an opportunity to gather up uh, elements and be able to participate being at the Lord's table. A piece of bread, a cracker, or some water, or some juice. But I also hope that as we begin, we reflect on that message of the vine and we are the branches. Because in it, I hope you heard of God's desire to not only be connected to us, but it be a deep close connection. And also, I hope you heard within that of our life-giving need to be in that kind of relationship with God, the source of all true life and the source of, of love. And what better way is that expressed when Jesus came together with his disciples in that upper room and he took the bread and he broke it and he said, take and eat, for this is my body, which is given for you. And then likewise, after the supper, he took the cup and blessed, to set a blessing over it. But then he also said, drink, for this is my blood, which is given for you. And for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in remembrance of me. So let us give thanks and let us remember that God, again, provides this wonderful opportunity to be in relationship, to be in life with God. Let us pray. God, bless these elements, bless these gifts, not only that they would nourish us, um, but that they would also nourish us spiritually. And so we give you thanks that you give us life. We give you thanks that you give us love as we come to this table, let us stay in fellowship and connection and closeness to you. Amen. So now if you'll take a piece of the bread and dip it in the cup, the body and blood of Christ given for us. Now, Lord, we've feasted at your table. We give you thanks. Amen.
now receive this benediction, this blessing from God as you leave your sacred space. Wherever you are in the world, know that God is seeking after you. And when you see God's love and when you see God's face and when you know God's presence, decide to stay. Stay close. Stay near. Don't leave God. And take that strength that you have because of God's presence and spread it around to the world that you live in and let them know that God loves them and is with them too. And do so in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.